This is 6 Minute English from bbclearningenglish.com. Hello and welcome to 6 Minute English from BBC Learning English. I'm Michelle and joining me today is Neil. Hello there. Now, it may be well past Halloween, but our topic today is a tale of the strange and supernatural. We're talking about witches. <laughs> But before we start on our mysterious journey, I've got a quiz question for you, Neil. Are you ready? Uh, Yes, come on then. How many people across Europe do you think were executed for witchcraft, that's the practice of magic, between the years 1500 and 1800? Was it A, 10,000 people, B, 20,000 people, or C, 50,000 people? Well, you'd you'd hope it was none of them, really. That sounds awful to be uh, executed for for making magic. But let's go with A, 10,000, because I hope it's nobody, really. (laughs) OK, well, you'll find out the answer at the end of the programme. Our scene is set in Pendle Hill in the northwest of England. Engineers doing maintenance work there were extremely surprised to find the remains of a 17th century house, which some people believe may be linked to a group of witches. Yes, the Pendle witches were a group of people who were famously tried for murder for witchcraft in the 17th century. Ten of them were found guilty and they were hanged. Mm. So Pendle Hill has strong links with witchcraft and folklore and the history of the area remains a tourist attraction today. There's even a special traffic sign warning witches not to fly low on their broomsticks or any faster than 30 miles an hour. And now some people think that the hidden cottage discovered by engineers may have belonged to one of the Pendle witches. But what's the real story behind these people who were treated so unfairly or persecuted for being witches? Let's listen to local tourist guide Simon Entwistle talking about the story behind the Pendle witches. What does he say was their real crime? Their only crime in life was to be poor, really, and they would beg off local people. And if local people wouldn't cough up with any money, they would curse them. And some of them actually believed they did, in fact, have witches' powers. Ten villagers were hanged. Simon believes the house just dug up is where they'd met. Uh, For a historian tour guide like me, it's like finding Tutankhamun's tomb. It's of such great significance. So, did you catch what he said the witch's only real crime was? Yes, he said their only real crime was to be poor. So it's a really sad story, isn't it? Mm, The so-called witches may have begged people for money. And then if people didn't give them any, they would curse them. This means to use supernatural powers to hurt someone. Tourist guide Simon Entwistle said they would curse local people if they wouldn't cough up any money. To cough up is a way of saying to produce something, normally money. But he certainly sounds very excited about the discovery of what could be a witch's house. And he even says that to him, it's like finding Tutankhamun's tomb. And he might be right, because when an archaeologist was brought in, he found the bones of a cat, which had apparently been mummified. Mummification is a way the ancient Egyptians preserved a person, or in this case animal's, body after they had died. And even more strangely, the mummified cat was found hidden in one of the walls of the house. And of course, witches are often associated with magical animals, especially cats. So let's hear from archaeologist Frank Chico. Does he think that the evidence points to a witch having lived in the house centuries ago? So here's the cat in all its glory. When an archaeologist was brought in, he found the remains of a mummified cat sealed into a wall. How old is that? Well, the doorway was blocked at least 200 years ago by the bricks in it. The building's definitely going back to the 17th century, so that fits in with the period. But we've got no evidence to actually concrete connect this up with the witches. That's just a stab in the dark. So, what do you think, Neil? Does it sound like there's much evidence for the cottage having belonged to witches? Well, he said there's no real evidence connecting the house to witches, but he did say that the buildings go all the way back to the 17th century, which is around the time of the witches' trial in Pendle Hill, 
And of course, there's that mummified cat found hidden in a wall. Very strange.、Mm, it all sounds very intriguing, doesn't it? But you're right. The archaeologist thinks there's no real evidence connecting the house to the Pendle witches, and he uses an interesting expression. He says it's a stab in the dark, meaning it's a guess or speculation. But whether the new discovery is connected to witches or not. Pendle Hill still has an eerie story to tell. Absolutely. Now, Neil, it's time to find out if you got your quiz question right. I asked you how many people across Europe were executed for witchcraft between 1500 and 1800, and what was your answer? I said A, ten thousand. Well, I can tell you that unfortunately you were wrong. The answer is C, fifty thousand people. Which is quite shocking, really. That's awful. Fifty thousand people executed across Europe between that time. Could you remind us of today's words, please, Neil? We had supernatural, witchcraft, tried for murder, folklore, persecuted, curse, to cough up, a stab in the dark, and eerie. Thanks very much, Neil, and thank you for listening. Bye. Goodbye. That was six minutes English from BBC Learning English.